there guys, Matt Barker here. I want to show you today how to make a basic macro in uh, RenderMan for Katana, but this, this tutorial will work for any renderer you use. Uh, the, when I say a basic macro, it's basically just sh it's showing you the concept uh, and you'll be able to roll with it and make your own and really speed up your day. One of the lesser popular areas of Katana is the shading graph. Uh, it can take a while to set up nodes like this. Um, there's not as many pretty icons and things as in other programs, but it's designed as just having a template. You throw things down, you render them out, no nonsense. Uh, when you've got a pipeline that might have a lot of lot of shading net, shading going on, uh, but you might have very common shader graphs that you're rinse repeating. Uh, this one here, for example, um, I've got diffuse roughness height being used as displacement um, through displacement translation nodes, uh, PXR displace, um, specular maps, um, bump there, bump and normals, uh, the mat IDs we did in the previous videos, um, into a network material through a, a PXR surface. So we've had to sort of, you know, create these nodes for every, every single thing. So what's really good to do is wrap all that up and have all the connections and everything done. So all you have to do is plug in your textures. But not only that, you can make a make your own interface or your own pr parameter layout to uh, make that easier. So with my katana, when I'm setting up shading network, I don't actually do it like I showed in the videos uh, earlier on. Um, I've progressed on to using macros. So this is my PXR Surface user one I've just made recently. I'm still working on it. Uh, but if I create that node, and it's just, I should just, sorry, iterate. Once you've made a macro, it just comes up in the list with, with all the others. So I've got all the, the PR men nodes here, and then my one I made is here. It just puts user at the end. Uh, and on this node, if it's just a group. If you look inside, you'll see I've got all these things called my asset, um, which connects it in, very similar to what I just went through. Uh, but if I edit this node, tap E, I've exposed just the inputs I want. Obviously, once I'll start doing look development and tweak in, I'll come in here and edit your normal uh, attributes when, when you know, customizing it per asset or adding specific things. Um, but a lot of the times when you're crunching through lots of environments, just being able to slot in the maps into these is super handy. I've also set up some stuff for scaling the, the displacement and normals as well. So I'll take you through how I set up this and hopefully you can have ideas that you can share on uh, forums and things to uh, create macros that, that will help all of us. So what we do to create one of those guys is uh, work on a shading network at first, and we've done videos on those. So I, I'll just copy one that I've already got. I'm gonna copy Control C on Grub and paste it over here. I'm gonna make a base for my setup. So the first thing I might do is just standardize the naming. I don't wanna be looking at nodes called Grub for the rest of my life once I've made this macro. So I'm gonna select all those nodes and go Control C. I'm using Notepad++ here. I'm going to paste the whole node in. Katana works really well with copying and pasting text around. Everything is just uh, everything is just uh, scripting in the background. So what I can do with this is go Control F and go Replace, and I can replace Grub with um, my asset. Just makes a bit more sense, I think. And go Replace all. Thirty-five occurrences were replaced. So now I'm going to click in here and go Control A, Control C to copy that data delete this guy out completely and paste it back in. So now I've got my asset with all the different uh, things and you could go through and clean up this numbering. Uh, the numbering's being added just because this is a duplicate in the scene somewhere. I've got quite a bit going on in this scene from my tutorial work, sorry. So if you can ignore those numbers, it'd be great. Um, so that's what we want. You would go through and uh, set up your uh, shading exactly how you liked it and you'd set up as many standard uh, settings as you could. I'm gonna have to go through on some of these because I copied it from my grub before and just go disable local assignment on all of the ones that I don't need and reset out any of the values that changed. 
I'm going to delete the mat ID just for this time. And click there, disable local assignments. Love that feature. Okay, so now we're fairly, uh, just do a double check, we're fairly uh, vanilla on this now. It's all, all fairly basic. So this contrast here is to boost my, um, to, to gamma up any skin surfacing that I'm using just for a cheap subsurface uh, color hack. Uh, so I'm going to group them up and that's not going to flow out. So one thing with groups, we need this bottom cable to be coming out to get the socket on the bottom. So what I'll do is create a dot node connect my asset network material to that and you'll see now I'll, I'll get a, an output group socket on that group. So what I can do with this, press E and with the group you don't have any attributes, it's just a group but we can come up here and go edit use it parameters. Move my monitor out of the way here and go make it really small. Uh, so now we're editing user parameters that allows us to add parameters so this, I can click add and I'll just add a string and this gives me a field just called new parameter. Click the little spanner and I can go widget type, file path, but while you're here just note that you can create all these different types of widgets and things as well, so all sorts of things. File path, that just gives us a little arrow here that we can go browse and browse for a file. So if I hit the little spanner, rename parameter, I'm just going to call this diffuse and now we've got a slot that it will allow us to slot a path into. I'm going to add a number uh, and that allows us to have a number in my scene. Um, I might actually just for demonstration purpose hook, try and hook that up to uh, the gamma here. We'll see if that works just to try something new. Uh, and uh, call that gamma. I'll leave it as number this time, but I'll rename it as um, uh, SSS uh, gamma. And cool. So we would go through and add a file path for every single one of these that we wanted and uh, connect all of that up. So I'm going to pause the video and just go ahead and, and uh, redo adding a string, uh, calling this. Uh, specular or whatnot and I'll come back to you once I've done them all. Okay so I've created all the string variables, turned them into file paths and give them all names here. Uh, so I don't want the I don't want the SSS gamma number before the normal so you can click these this button here and reorder parameters in your list. Okay and now we need to link these parameters to the actual slots in here. So this is how we do that. I come back to the group and I press E to edit it and I've got it in the list here. I'll then go inside the group by clicking the plus and I'll go shift, middle mouse, drop it in here. So that allows me to have more than one parameter in the pane uh, and you can stack up as many as you want and you can dock them up here. But if we were to double click or edit on another node, it would wipe out this list. So be careful there. It can be a little fiddly. So I press space on this so I've got a bit more room. So the file name needs to be connected to the diffuse. So it's the other way around. So I need to uh, grab this one. So we hold down Control and Shift and middle mouse from the word diffuse there down to the word file name. You'll see it go blue and when it's linked we can find a, uh, a texture and um, plug that in. This is a HDR map but whatever. Um, there we go and you'll see it, it links it up. So we can go through and do all of those. So if I, come, if I tab that one back up, find my roughness, shift middle mouse drag over and then control shift middle mouse connect down. So rinse repeat all of these. Uh, the one that's different is the gamma but it shouldn't be that different. Um, 
We'll bring that over, place that there, and connect the SSS gamma number here to that one. Yeah, and that's gonna work fine. Just double check that. Yep. Cool. So uh, this is now linked them together and I'm able to go finish editing user parameters. And now, whenever I view my group, I'll just clear my pane out there. So yeah, now whenever I edit the group, um, I'll be able to use these quick and easy uh, input fields here without everything else in the way. So once you've established a pipeline in your team or just even just with yourself, you can make these macros that don't really change the pipeline a whole lot, but they'll allow you just to really quickly get a base down for all your materials and, and look dev work. Uh, really handy when you've got a lot. Um, so that can be copy pasted around and then we could uh, we could actually copy it, go back to notepad and turn my asset um, into, you know, uh, Voltron or whatever, and that's going to work. Um, but uh, what we actually want to do uh, is, so you can do that, um, some sort of pop-up super tool with a script or something would be better for that, but that's just what I've been doing lately um, so far. But what we need to do to convert this into a macro, what, what I'm getting at is this is just a single group in a single scene. It's not going to exist in the next Katana project that I have. Uh, what I want to do to convert this to a macro and actually appear in my node list is I'm going to, I'm going to right click and go so it's not in this list, sorry, it's over here on the spanner. I've just name this PXR surface macro. And you come over to the spanner and you go save as macro. So uh, you want to make a uh, folder uh, inside of your .katana file. So for me, this is uh, C drive users intraware.katana. On Windows, you can open up this uh, with Windows and R, open your run dialog and just type .katana. That will take you straight there. I've made a file, a folder called macros here. There'll probably already be one actually. And inside of your user folder, you save that in there. Then when you uh, restart Katana, you're gonna find that it's in the list. Another macro that I've created is my um, interactive render filters. I uh, didn't want to show this in the interactive render filters video prior to this, just because it may confuse it. But every scene I open now for render man, I create one of these and chuck it down. And then all my, uh, all my uh, interactive render filters are there already and I don't have to set them up. It's a big time saver for me. So that's creating a very basic macro, but I hope that gives you some uh, confidence to jump in and, and make way better tools than I've demonstrated here quickly. And uh, you know, it's some really, really handy stuff that'll, that'll launch forward your speed and productivity in Katana. So have a good day.